Hey, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about SFZ, which is a sampling format, a little bit like the kind of sampling format that Contact uses or Ableton. Um, SFZ's big uh, superpower is that it's completely free uh, and it's implemented, it's an open standard and it's implemented by a bunch of different plugins. Um, yeah, let's get started. So today we're gonna be sampling this thing. It is a toy xylophone from my son's toy collection. I'm not gonna bore you with a whole recording phase of this. Uh, I have other videos about that. Uh, so I'm just gonna record the samples and um, chop them up. And once I have them recorded and chopped up and named and everything, uh, I'm gonna meet you back here and we'll get started. Okay, so I've done my recording and now I'm the proud possessor of some toy xylophone samples. As you can see here, I've recorded four hits of each note and I've actually thrown out some of the samples because uh, some of the keys on the toy xylophone were just really uh, terrible sounding. Um, so I think we've got like five notes. It should be really easy to put this together. So we are ready to get started. Uh, one thing that's worth knowing right off the bat about SFZ is that uh, the actual SFZ file is just a text file. Uh, you can use any text editor to edit it. Uh, I'm gonna use Sublime Text because that's what I like most, but uh, you could use anything. You could use text edit or whatever. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to pull up a template. Okay, so here we have a basic SFZ file. SFZ was conceived a long, long time ago by Cakewalk and they made it kind of an open standard. Uh, it's a weird thing where like, they kind of like put basic guidelines for how to implement this format uh, and didn't really follow up and there's no governing body. So every SFZ um, uh, plugin works slightly differently. It's not a great situation. Uh, it's not like contact where like there's this great manual and uh, there are tons of videos out on the internet. There are a handful of resources like sfzformat.com is uh, basically a wiki uh, where you can go and find general information about uh, how um, these files are supposed to be structured. Another place you can go is the forum for Plogue software. I'll put a link in the description to this video. Um, there are a bunch of different resources where you can find out how to create these SFZ files and especially helpful when you have like a kind of a weird situation. So yeah, as I said, SFZ files are basically just text files. We can copy this and get started. I've actually got syntax highlighting in my uh, sublime text. So um, we can at least see these uh, different sections. Um, Okay, so we've got our basic file and we're gonna save this in just a second. The other thing that we need, of course, is we need a plugin for playing the SFC file once we've like made this. So uh, I'm gonna launch live and I'm going to pull in Sportsondo. Sportsondo is definitely my plugin of choice for SFC files. Here, we're gonna save this. And I'm gonna call it Toy Xylophone. And now we are ready. Sforzando is completely free and I'll put a download link in the description to the YouTube video. Uh, it's, it's really, really stable. It's really lightweight. It's a, it's a very good VST, very well coded. Okay, let's get back to that file. Um, so SFZ files are um, separated into these uh, sections. There's a control section, a global section, a group section, and a region section. Um, and it's kind of like a hierarchical uh, organization. So uh, parameters that you, um, want to affect every single uh, sample in your entire instrument would go up in the global section. Uh, then you can separate it out into groups. It's a lot like the groups that you might find in like a contact instrument. Uh, and then you can have parameters here. Like for example, they've given us some, some dummy parameters like cutoff and resonance uh, if you wanted that. Um, and loop mode, these apply to all of the regions under this group. Uh, and if you wanted to make another group, you would basically just type group here and this two is just a comment. That's just so that you can keep track of it. Uh, right now, our instrument is gonna have one group. Uh, even if we're doing round robins, we still can use just a single group. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna um, get rid of all of this stuff. We don't need any of these parameters. They're kind of just giving us examples of parameters we could use. Um, so I'm gonna try to simplify this as much as possible and we can get rid of all of this here and we can get rid of this and this header. We don't need anything else. And we actually don't even need global and control if we don't have any global things that we're trying to set or don't have any controls in our instrument, which we're not going to. Okay, so let's look at the region group because that's actually the most important group. It's the one where we actually define our samples. We actually do our sample mapping. Um, so I'm gonna actually make this window a little bit smaller. 
as we can see here, we have a list of samples and I'm just going to grab the names of these samples and paste it in here. Sublime Text is really good for manipulating uh, very similar lines. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this here. And by the way, these little tokens here, sample equals or key equals, these are called opcodes. And when you're searching for information, um, you'll see things like opcode list. That's referring to uh, different tokens that you can use in these sections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the names of all of these files. And yes, there's a much quicker way to do this in Sublime Text. I'm doing it the long way just so that you can see what I'm doing. As you can see, I've taken the work out of this by already numbering the notes. So sample equals is the name of the sample file. Key equals is the MIDI number. Um, so 83, 85, 88, so on and so forth. And we'll want that to say dot wave. Okay, I just saved it, and now we are ready to try out our sample file. So I'm gonna open up this, and here's the SFZ we just created. I'm gonna drag it into Sforzando. And as you can see, these keys lit up. That's where we have samples mapped. So immediately you'll see some cool things about Sforzando. Uh, it shows you what sample it just played. That's super useful when you're working with round robins because you can actually see these uh, files changing as you hit the same note again and again. So as you can see, we've got some gaps. The black keys are not covered at all. And these keys don't have any samples mapped to them. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, instead of defining a single key that each of these map to, we're gonna actually define a key range. Um, so we're going to uncomment this. And we now have the low key, high key, and pitch key center opcode to fill in. So pitch key center is the actual true value of the note. So in this case, it's gonna be the same as we entered here for key. And by the way, once we've entered these in, we're gonna get rid of key because key is no longer useful once you're defining a key range. So I'm actually gonna get rid of key. And let's say we want this to map all the way down to key 70, whatever that is. And the high key, we don't want it to go past this key. So we'll say 84. I'm gonna hit save. Now we can go back to Sportsondo. Another cool thing about Sportsondo is uh, if you make any changes to that underlying text file, it reloads the instrument automatically. It's pretty helpful. So as you can see, this range expanded a whole bunch. Okay, uh, <laughs> doesn't sound great. Um, so yeah, we're gonna continue. We're gonna do the same thing for all of the others. And I'm actually gonna just, since these values are being copied over from key to key center. We might as well just do that. We're going to make our low key and high key opcodes. And now we're just going to fill in gaps. So this one goes from 96 to 95. So I think the high key is probably going to be 98, let's say. And the low key will be 96. High key will be 95. I'm kind of just eyeballing this uh, to 94. have these each extend down one note. 91 down to one above 88 is 89. Basically, I'm just trying to make sure that there are no gaps. 88 down to 86, which is one more than 85. 85 down to 84. And we'll change this, okay, and hit save. Okay, there we can see. Boy, it's a really terrible sounding xylophone. But anyway, you can see that the mapping worked. Uh, okay, so there are a couple things I wanna do. Uh, one thing I wanna do is I want to um, play with the release time. Um, annoying thing about this is that as soon as I let up on these keys, the sound ends. And I don't want that, I want the sound to actually ring out. Um, so I'm going to change the release time uh, for each of these samples. So basically what I need to do is I need to figure out the opcode that I need in order to modify the release time. So we're gonna go back to that SFZ format site and we'll go to syntax, 
SFZ opcodes. And we're going to look for something that says release or something like that. Ah, I think that's it. Click on that. <laughs> this website's a little bit messed up. I think that's the right one. Uh, when I click through, there's some sort of error about this page. So I'm just going to grab this and hope for the best. And I think this is in seconds. Let's try five and see if it fixes things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess that was right. Um, yeah, as you can see, there are a whole bunch of uh, parameters. Uh, hopefully this website will get fixed soon because it's pretty much the only place to get this information. Okay, so it's already working. Uh, now you'll remember that when I recorded this, uh, I actually recorded four hits of each note. I don't really know why I need round robins for such a terrible sample, but uh, we've got the samples, so we might as well map them. So I'm gonna open these up. And as you can see, um, these uh, samples uh, are numbered. So basically it's 83 and then the number of the hit is just one, two, three, or four. Uh, and I've been consistent about that throughout. So uh, that should make mapping really, really easy. So in order to do round robins, we're going to use um, uh, basically like a sequence, a sequence of notes. So the first time you hit it, it'll do number one, second time number two, second, third time number three. Um, what we need is these two opcodes. Uh, I know this just from Googling around. Um, so we need sequence length, which is basically the number of round robins we have. And then we need sequence position, which is basically which round robin position this is. So we're going to grab sequence length and in this case it's four and we're going to grab sequence position in this case it's one I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can see what we're doing and i'm actually going to copy this four times and we're going to change this to two three and four okay and we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these And we can actually just copy this block of text. One of many reasons I love Sublime Text. And yeah, you get the idea. I'm gonna kind of power through the rest. Okay, so I'm done with the mapping uh, where before I had one row for each of the samples and now I have four uh, pointing to the four different versions of each of the notes. Uh, I think we're ready to go back into Sforzando. So the important thing is to look here and see what files are being triggered. I'm gonna hit the same note a bunch of times. As you can see, it's doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So yeah, uh, we've got our round robins. So yeah, that is pretty much it. That is an SFZ file. Uh, as you can see, it's much more bare bones than something like Contact. It doesn't have a nice UI. Sforzando actually does support nice UIs um, using something called ARIA, which is built on top of SFZ. But the second you start using those ARIA extensions to SFZ, uh, your file stops being portable. Um, so uh, SFZ on its own has uh, very limited support for controls and they always have to be tied to um, MIDI continuous controllers. So for example, um, you know, over here it gives you two for free, uh, MIDI CC7 and MIDI CC10. Um, it's possible to label these so that they don't say 7 and 10 uh, and tie them to specific parameters. Um, but that's about it. It's not like a beautiful skin thing like a nice contact instrument might be. Still, it is free um, and you know, that's pretty great. Okay, I think that's it. I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna put a link to this instrument in the description to the YouTube video, although it's not that great sounding, but it's a good way of uh, seeing a, an SFZ file in the wild. Uh, I definitely encourage you to download Sforzando because there are great SFZ files uh, all over the net and uh, yeah, well worth downloading. Uh, yeah, if you've been enjoying these videos, remember to hit like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, take care.